Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in to another match preview show where it is time for Liverpool versus Newcastle. And I'm joined by a very special guest. It is Paul from the Toon Review. How are you doing, my friend? I'm okay, buddy. How are you? I'm not too bad. It's You're nice good. to be talking about football for yeah, a change. Yeah, there's been a lot going on at Liverpool, hasn't there? Yes, I, I will get your take on it. Um, there is a big injury blow for Liverpool. We'll, we'll get into that very, very quickly. But one one of the first questions I want to ask you, Paul, um, and I'll leave your socials in the description down below, is you said Liverpool versus Newcastle, iconic fixture. My question to you is, what is your favourite memory from that from that from that from this game? Um, well, I've got a few. I mean, you know, there's been times when um, you guys have actually, um, well, tonked us really, um, so that they don't stand out in the memory very well. But I mean, obviously, the four threes are going to stand out in everybody's mind. Um, absolutely fantastic games. Although we came out on the losing side, um, I was actually at Anfield for the first one, and I'll, I'll never forget the atmosphere. It was just incredible. Um, and you know, yes, heads were dropped when uh, when Collymore scored, but it was just just that moment, you know, just being there, you know, the atmosphere before the game and it's a fantastic place to go and watch football, I think. So the four threes will always stand out in my mind, uh, even though we lost. Uh, they were just yeah. iconic games. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I was a little bit too young to remember um, 95, 96. I, was, I think mm. I would have been only three at the time. But obviously from watching, you know, Premier League years and, yeah. you know, you know, highlights of those games. It, it must have been some game to have been at, but my goodness me. Uh, yeah, Kevin Keegan, uh, over the advertising hoardings, uh, he, he he couldn't believe it. So That's the yeah. thing, isn't it? That's that's the picture when, when the goal goes in and then the cameras pan to Keegan on the sidelines just bent over the, 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 the advertising board and um, just completely devastated and and that's the sort of that's the sort of iconic picture I'm talking about that never seems to go away um but you know it was it was just a, it was great to be part of I guess yeah definitely I'm going to have to ask you this because obviously everyone will know what the big big talking point is mm -hmm. this week the European Super League now yeah. as a Newcastle fan what did you make of what has actually happened in what has to be a whirlwind 48 hours mm. Uh, it, it was, certainly was a whirlwind. I mean, the first I heard of it was, um, I believe, before I went to bed on Sunday night because uh, it was announced really late. Um, and I think they were quite sly in doing that, thinking that everybody would be in bed and, uh, you know, it would just be sort of shoved under the carpet kind of thing. They never expected anything like the fan reaction that they had. Um, I think it was disgraceful what the owners did um, to, to all six clubs, really. I mean, you know, going... Uh, above the manager, the players, the fans, not even telling them about what was going on. Um, and then just sort of to announce it, that it was already signed and, and sealed kind of thing. Um, just utter disgraceful, really. And I felt for the fans. I mean, I said on my shows all along that I felt for the fans. And, um, you know, when we've been talking about, you know, what sort of punishment should these teams get, etc. Uh, we have to take the fans into consideration. Um, then you've got other people firing back saying, you know, clubs who've been involved in points deductions and things like that in the past saying, no, you know, that our fans were never uh, thought about when those points deductions were given and things like that. So uh, it, it's a tough one. It's it's horrible for, for, for any of those six clubs, to be honest. I, I, I really admire the way the fans have fought back, though, um, because the one thing the owners didn't expect was the fan reaction and the fan backlash that they got. Yeah. Um, you know, fans outside the stadiums, um, banners everywhere, and, and just really making them making their feelings known. And I think fans from other clubs got together as well um, to, to vent their disapproval. Uh, other clubs came out with statements as well, um, basically hammering the, 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 the Super League. Um, so it was just nice for once all the football fans to put rivalries aside and come together and fight the same cause. Um what happens now, I guess, is in the hands of the Premier League, UEFA and things like that to see uh, what sort of sanctions they're going to put on these clubs. Yeah, I know. Um, I I was totally against it uh, from the start and I have been a constant thing in this mm. and saying that it was just completely wrong. Yeah. And yeah, you know, greedy, greedy businessman, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, as, you, as you say, it's a collective effort from fans, 
I th- I think players as well coming out and saying yeah. they they don't want it either. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Jordan Henderson was a big big part of that. Um, you know, he he made a he made a meeting to you know meet all the twenty uh, Premier League captains and talk he about did. this, and then yeah. late on, um, I think it was Tuesday evening. Uh, it, you know, it started with with him saying, "Oh, yeah, we don't want it. Uh, mm-hmm. Our position is clear. Um, you'll never walk alone." And you know, it kind of stopped then, and then obviously he had everyone you know pulling out after that. So look, it was it was one thing that you know the the owner the greedy owners are going to have to you know live with and um you know i think now it's going to be a collective to see which one of arsenal liverpool or manchester United can get rid of their american american owners but yeah what sort of punishments do you think the premier league will give the top six uh well i've talked about this a couple of times i'm not really sure to be honest i mean it, it it's i don't think any relegation should be should take place i mean i, I you know i watched um you know, Mark Goldbridge this morning was talking about it as well, and, and saying that he wouldn't have been, uh, he would have preferred to start off bankrupt and in the National League again rather than play in the Super mm. League. So, I mean, that's how high feelings are running. Um, I don't, I don't think necessary about uh, relegation, but I did put on uh, do a show last night and um, just talking about what what kind of punishments they could do for these clubs and maybe. I don't know, maybe something like a points deduction for the start of next season, not this season, you know, play this season out, get rid of this season and move on. Um, maybe start on a, a minus next season, whatever that may be, uh, and the transfer embargo possibly um, for mm. a couple of seasons. Just, they've got, they've got to come down on the clubs hard, but they've got to also take into account that the players and the fans knew nothing about it. So yeah. it, it's got to be... It's got to, it's got to have that sort of taken into consideration as well. But, you know... The, at the end of the day, they've got to make a sanction now that says, right, this doesn't happen again. Um, and it, so it has to be a pretty strong punishment. But in a way, I feel like, um, you know, maybe a, a transfer embargo and a points deduction is probably the best way to go around it. Um, but start the, the, the points reduction from next season. Don't take anything this season. Obviously, play this season out and start mm-hmm. from fresh from next year. Yeah, absolutely. Right. That's the European Super League side of things away from football. Now we can actually talk about actual football. Um, yep. Newcastle, mm. one defeat in six. You've had a bit of a wee resurgence. Do you think now you are safe from relegation? Um, yes, I do. But uh, until we're mathematically safe, I'll not say that 100%, but I'm, I'm pretty much 95% of the way there um, thinking we are safe. Um, the one defeat in six is you know, has definitely saved our season, but we're still not playing very well, if I'm honest. You know, we have mm. we have we have patches in games where, you know, we'll play a good 45 minutes like last week. We were tremendous in the first half against West Ham and then completely awful in the second. Um yeah. and that's been our problem all season. We can't play in 90 minutes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean you you basically did uh, a West Ham um you know they they their dangerous scoreline is either 2-0 or 3-0 yeah, and you know you managed to let them back in, and then you know Joe Willock scores a, a fantastic, a fantastic header. Mm. But you know, you know what? The the one thing I have I have seen about Newcastle is is is, is the fight is definitely there. You are getting players back at the right time. I do know that Sir Maximan is a bit of a doubt. How big a blow would he be uh, to he's, miss he's, this? He's game? fit. He's fit. Is he's he clear. fit? Yeah. Um, Steve Bruce has done his. Uh, press conference this morning he's trained all week he's fine um so is Callum Wilson and I think it's a, it's a massive boost having them back um because Maxi was brilliant last week in the first half against West Ham he, he just ran them ragged um yeah if there's any sort of um criticism I guess against St Maximan it's is is he seems to be made of glass you know and, and, mm. and if, if he takes a couple of heavy challenges he limps off um there was reports when he came back from his last injury that he put weight on. Um, now, whether that was bulking himself up, trying to get himself a bit, you know, stronger for the Premier League, um, but I guess that'll come in time. Um, so I'm pretty pleased that they're playing. Um, you know, we, yeah. we we have again, you know, these games that we play. Um, it's just trying to get 90 minutes of football out of the whole team because we just don't seem mm. to be able to do that, and. I, do we put that down to Steve Bruce's press conference? Uh, sorry, uh, halftime team talks, etc. You know, whatever he said last week went completely the opposite way. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to talk about Steve Bruce now. Um, uh, look, there are lots of people who definitely want 
Bruce out. Uh, you're one of them. Um, yeah. What have you actually made of Steve Bruce as manager? Um, well, when he first came into the club, he was he was kind of this. Um, he had this persona that he was, um, you know, this lovely guy. He was he was a, a really down to earth kind of man and uh, a good man manager. Um, I haven't seen any of that at Newcastle. Um, he's mm. um, he's spoken very derogatory about the fans. Um, and I think he's got away with it because there's no fans in the stadium. Um, I truly believe that if there was fans in the stadium, um, he wouldn't be there anymore. Uh, the atmosphere would have been absolutely toxic in that stadium and to the point where it would become untenable for him. Um, but the, the things that he said in press conferences about the fans, the fallout with the players, uh, making it all public, um, I just think it's 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 rotten to the core. And this sort of thing about Steve Bruce being a lovely guy, we haven't seen it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, his, his tactics are terrible. His substitutions are just abysmal. Um, he doesn't seem to have a plan B. Whenever something goes wrong, he can't change it. Uh, he just puts a couple of forwards on and starts lumping the ball, long ball. And, um, you know, it's it's dinosaur tactics, really. It, you know, yeah. he's out of date, put it that way. Mm. You know, if, if he does, like, I know, I know. People will say that you are you are safe. Do you hmm. expect a change in the summer? Uh, I want a change, but um, I don't expect it. Um, the hmm. thing is, with with Newcastle, you know, we we, we kind of. We're we're in between a rock and a hard place at the minute with regards to the takeover because um, that has come to light again this week. You know, it was trending again on Twitter, etc., about the takeover because uh, with what's going on now with the with the Super League, that could have a positive effect on our takeover because it was six teams who uh, were against the Newcastle United yeah. takeover, and it's exactly the same six teams who wanted to go into the Super League. So something is definitely off on that side of it. Um, but it may make the Premier League just sit up and take notice because there's court cases and everything to come, arbitration. Uh, we just have to wait and see what comes of that. If there's no takeover in the summer, um, we as Newcastle fans are pretty much dreading waking up one morning and saying that uh, Mike Ashley has given Steve Bruce a, a five-year extension or whatever it is. He did it with Pardew, um, and it is perfectly um, <laughs> foreseeable that he'll do that with <laughs> Steve Bruce. Uh We'd love to see somebody else come in. I mean, there's some there's some decent managers there who would probably work under Ashley, um, mm. but that's not a very big list at all, uh, and and that's that's worrying for me because you know they, they, we're kind of shopping bargain basement when you know we could have a takeover and shop in Harrods. It, it's that much of a difference, you know, between the takeover and no takeover. Yeah, as as indeed. But you know what? You, that this wee run has all but got you safe. I, I honestly can't see Fulham getting out of it now. No. Um, I know they do have a game this weekend, but some of the games I think they've got coming up. Like oh, I know the I know the last game of the season is Fulham Newcastle, but I think yeah. you'd be already safe. I think they'd probably mm. already uh, be down by then. So yeah. you know, it'd probably be a a meaningless game, but. How have you summed up your season as a whole? Because ha- has it been a bit of a, a roller coaster? Would you say uh, every season's a roller coaster up here? Um, <laughs> every single season, um, it, it just seems. You know, when we when we just think things are quieting down at Newcastle United, something happens where we're in the news again for all the wrong reasons, and it seems to be the case for for, for this season again. You know, opening day when we beat West Ham. Um, you know, we saw Callum Wilson score, Jeff Hendricks score, and we thought, right, you know, we looked a decent side. Um, but whatever happened between that game and the rest of the season is is just chalk and cheese uh, because mm. we fell apart after that. And um, I don't get why. I mean, I think, you know, some of the buys we've had have been absolutely abysmal. Um, you know, I mean, Jeff Hendrick, my God, uh, he's just a non-existent footballer for me. I mean, he may have had his, his good moments at Burnley, etc., but he is rotten. Um, and obviously hasn't played for a while. You've got Joe Linton, who, my God, 40 million quid. Jesus. I mean, you paid 20 million for Jota. You know, it, it just, it beggars belief, uh, whoever did yeah. that deal. Um, but it's just, just uh, yeah, Joe Linton, um, he was just, it's an abysmal uh, deal, which basically, I, I don't know who did the deal or uh, who's responsible for it, but they should be severely punished in my eyes because, <laughs> um, you know, if you look at the quality of Diego Jota um, compared to Joe Linton, it's 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 miles apart, miles and miles apart. It really is, and it's um, 
you know, so we, we've had kind of that. We've had formation problems, team selections being wrong. Um, there's been a whole host of things, to be honest, that that, that, that Steve Bruce has got wrong on every level. Um, and that's been our downfall this season. Um, I don't think we've actually got a bad squad on paper. Um, mm-hmm. However, you know, if we if we look at it, it's it's square pegs and round holes with Steve Bruce when he doesn't have to. Our ideal formation would be four two three one. Every fan can see that. That's how, um, you know, we, we've got the players to play in those positions. But for some reason, we never do. Um, he settled on this five at the back at the minute, so we'll see how long that goes on for. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, I think, like I remember, I remember when you signed um, up to Callum Wilson. That mm-hmm. that's that's been your best signing of the, of the season by yeah. by far. Yeah. Jamal Lewis, I remember a lot of people saying Jamal Lewis was a was a very, very good up and coming uh player. Like we were in for him, uh, oh. but we were obviously put off by the twenty million um price tag and then, you know, obviously Jeff Hendrick as well. So has Callum Olsen been your best signing, would you say? Um, by far, because if it wasn't for his goals, um we'd be in deep trouble this season. Uh, yes, some of them have been penalties, but you've still got to put them away at the end of the day. So he's done that. Um, Jamal Lewis, uh, you know, I saw him a lot for Norwich City last season and I thought he was brilliant um, in a very poor Norwich side that obviously got relegated. So um, with Jamal Lewis, I just think he's been coached wrong. He hasn't been given the confidence. He's a young lad. He's moved up to Newcastle um, from Norwich. He's been thrown straight in the team um, and his confidence went very, very quickly and he's never got it back. Um, now I put that down to the coaching the coaching with him has been all wrong nobody's really stepped in and said right you know this is what we need to do I'm just hoping that the players that are there now the likes of Dummett, Ritchie um, etc can sort of take him under his way their wing and, and maybe try and um, give him a bit of confidence back because he is a good player there's a brilliant player in there um, he just needs to to get that confidence back yeah definitely do you, do you know do you know it's it's i mean ryan Fraser is another one i mean he uh-huh. he's a he's a weird one he's yeah. a very very weird one mm. what do you what do you think the situation is with him well there's 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 many stories up here that um ryan Fraser has done nothing but moan and groan since he signed for the club um he didn't want to sign in the first place i think it was uh, basically his only option at the end of the day um, because of his wage demands, uh, we decided to pay the wages and it's backfired on us massively uh, because there was trouble with him at Bournemouth. We all know that. It was it was well documented. Um, and it seems to be just a continuation of what he was like at Bournemouth. Uh, his attitude's wrong. He's never really done anything for us when he's been in the team this season, but he seems to go on international duty and perform. And this is what is, is frustrating me and many other Newcastle fans is the fact that we see him go away with Scotland scoring goals, you know, running hard all over the pitch. Yet he comes back to Newcastle and he's injured. Um, now, Steve Bruce has said in a press conference this morning that he needs a, a small operation. Um, you know, I don't know whether to believe him or not. I, I, you know, he could be he could be just hiding the fact that, you know, Fraser's attitude's all wrong and he's, he's not mm-hmm. going to sort of air that in public. Um, so he may not need an operation, but he, you know, he probably does. I'm just being facetious in a way. But I, I do think... Um, that Fraser's attitude has been wrong since he signed for the club, and it's a shame because that guy's got a he got bags of talent as well. And uh, I thought he would have been uh, a perfect link up for you know places at Maximan on one side, Fraser on the other, Wilson through the middle. It's it's a it's a three, it's it's a threesome that could do some damage, you know. But unfortunately, uh, we've never seen that. <laughs> no, definitely not. So going away from Newcastle, what have you made of Liverpool this season as a sort of a, a Geordie? Um. Well, I've got lots of Liverpool fr- um, friends, basically, and um, you know who I see when I go down there. And I've been very surprised with Liverpool because I thought last season superb, won the title, really pleased for them um, to see them back to to, to winning things again. And uh, I thought Klopp was really gathering a another sort of Manchester United from the nineties, if you like, where Liverpool were going to be dominant. Um, for some reason, they fell away. I think the injuries in, in your defence have hurt you badly this season, especially with Van Dijk. Um, you know, I can't believe Pickford got away with that. I mean, that was just an assault, a basic assault. Um, and, you know, we all covered it on our channels as well. Uh, we just couldn't believe what we saw. Um, so I think he's been a massive miss. And then obviously you've got, the, you've got some more injuries in the, in the back four. 
And the thing is with the back four, you have to, everybody knows that you have to have a steady back four who know each other and play with each other week in, week out to have that stability. And unfortunately, that's something Liverpool haven't had. You've had to put midfielders back in centre defence, you know, Henderson as well, who is, you know, I don't really talk about Henderson much being an ex Sunderland player, but he's, do, you know, he's done well to step back into the the back four for Liverpool. But you know, you need you need your strong players there, and I think that's what started the sort of snowball effect for Liverpool this season. Um, and they haven't been able to get the confidence back. I've been really surprised that you lost to the likes of Fulham and and things like that at home. Um, yeah. The home form for me is the one that's let you guys down a lot, and I'm very surprised at that because. Anfield was kind of a fortress last season. It was, it was, yeah. Um, I don't think anyone would have visited us having you know six home defeats in a row, and then yeah. you know we managed to end against Aston Villa. But Newcastle fans can take delight from the fact that our last visit to Merseyside, they beat Everton two 0 at Goodison Park. So do you, do you think this is the best time to be playing Liverpool? Um, I don't know if I'm honest. I really don't because <laughs> you could look at it on on two sides. I mean, yes, we we played really well at Everton. That was um, that was the first game that Graham Jones had come into the coaching staff, and we'd noticed a, a massive difference in the way we were playing. Um, but with Liverpool, you, you've got you know, yes, they've lost six league. We well, lost six in a row at home and things like that prior this season. And you know, we kind of teams look forward to playing us. I don't know why, but it's just the way that this season's panned out. You know, teams will be playing really bad football and then come up against Newcastle and look like Brazil. Uh, it, you know, it happened when we, you know, Sheffield United, who've been rotten this season, we go down to Bramall Lane and make them look like a, a, a top six side. We, we were just dreadful. And, um, you know, but you've got the other side of the coin where, Yes, the confidence has been rocked by Liverpool and, you know, you probably should have lost to Leeds the other night. There was lots of chances for Leeds that they should have really buried you, in fact. Um, but then you kind of look and think, right, well, with all that's gone on with the Super League, you know, the players are going to come out wanting to prove something for the fans. They're going to want to do something for the fans because they know they're well aware of the fans' backlash that's happened because of the Super League. Um the fans know that the players didn't want it. So is this time for the players to come out on Saturday um, and just absolutely bury us and make a point that, you know, they're playing for the fans and nobody else. So it could be a good time to play is given your form this season. But on the other hand, you've got the, the, the ESL, you know, saga, and that's going to put you guys in a much, much stronger position. Um, if the players are thinking in the dressing right, we're going to go out, we're going to bury Newcastle because we're going to play for the fans today and prove where our loyalties lie. And that could make it very difficult for us. It's going to be a very interesting game. I know last yeah. season 3-1. Um, Williams, I think it was Williams that scored the... Williams, uh, the yeah, yeah. Um, and then you know, we managed to win uh, 3-1 uh, in the end. So oh. it's going to be a very, very interesting game. So... Going into now starting 11s, what is your starting 11 for Newcastle on uh, Saturday? Um, I believe it'll probably be pretty much the same as last weekend with Callum Wilson coming back in. So we'll probably start with Dubravka in goal. We'll have the three centre-backs of um, Dummett, um, Clark and um, Fernandez. Uh, right wing back will have Murphy. Left wing back will be Richie. Midfield for me should be Willock and Longstaff, but it won't be. It'll be Shelby and either or Willock or Longstaff. Um, but I believe he'll play the same as what he did last week. So he'll probably play Shelby and uh, Longstaff, even though Shelby's just a waste of space at the minute. Um, and up front, he'll go with Almiron through the middle. And then um, he'll have, um, obviously, ASM and Wilson. So Joe Linton will probably have to miss out. Uh, a lot of fans have been a bit facetious saying that they probably, you know, the way Steve Bruce manages the club, he'll probably keep Wilson on the bench again, um, which which would be criminal, really, because he's he's fit. He should start. And then if he does tire, you bring him off after, you know, 70-odd minutes. Um, but but start him. You know, you've got to start your best players. And until we're mathematically certain of, of safety, then uh, we have to start our best team, simple as. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Callum Wilson worries me. He always loves a goal against Liverpool. Scored against, scored at Anfield for Bournemouth last season. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he he does he does like a goal and Sam Maximan just 
scares the living daylights out of me. Um, him running at Andy Robertson could be very, very interesting. Okay, yeah. so this is what I think the Liverpool team will be to uh, face Newcastle. Now, the big, big news, and Paul will be absolutely delighted to hear this, Diogo Jota looks like he will miss this game. He has missed two days of training yeah. according to the One Football app. Uh, so we're interested to see Klopp's um, press conference anyway. But um, you have still got the uh, Salamani and Firmino to, uh, oh. to deal with. This is my lineup. So we've gone for Alisson, Trent, Kabak, Fabinho, Robertson, Van Alden, Thiago Jones, Salah, Manny, Firmino. And then on the bench, we've got Adrian, Neko Williams, Nabi Keita, James Milner, Jordan Shakiri, Oxley Chamberlain, Diva Kurigi, Kostas Simikas, and the forgotten man, Ben Davis. So when you look at that team, uh, <laughs> when you look at that team, do you, do you think you can get at the two, two centre backs? Because there is talk that Phillips is going to miss this game as well. So, you know, Quebec and Phillips had a very good partnership, but with yeah. to beat you at the back, we lose our sort of defensive structure in midfield. Um, to be honest, I don't think Liverpool will have a lot to worry about defensively tomorrow. I really don't. Um, even if Wilson starts, we've got to provide him with the service. And if, to be honest, Almiron hasn't really provided much service lately. Um, yes, his work rate is fantastic, etc. We know that. Um, but he tends to get sort of... Um, Taken his mind gets taken away with the game, so he's he's, he's rather thinking about defending. Um, he comes back and helps the defense out a lot, which isn't a bad thing on the odd occasion. He's just there every single time, um, which disappoints me because he should be up front. Um, he missed a sitter against West Ham um, last week. You know, Wilson squared it across to him. He's a left footed player. It was right on his left foot, just a tap in the net, and for some strange reason, he tried to control it and it bounced away. Um, He's he's a hard worker. He's a runner, but you know, is he is he the be all and end all? I, d I don't know with Almiron. He's he's he flat mm. to deceive at times. Um, so really, we're looking at um, St. Maximan and Wilson to do the damage. I, I I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I went for a two-two prediction, and I, I don't know why because I can't see where we're going to get two goals tomorrow. Um, it's it's going to be tough. Put it that way. 2-2. Two, two. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be a lot closer than many people think. I've seen I've seen people put out like, oh, it's going to be like 3 nils or something like 4-1s. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. no, 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 no. Newcastle are the very defensive uh, minded team and you know they won't they won't concede um threes or fours. I'm gonna go two on Liverpool. And funnily enough, I know the man you said is a bit of a waste of space right now, but I'm actually Shelby loves a goal against Liverpool. Oh God, yeah. I, he yeah. actually he scores a few bangers against us, so I can actually see him scoring. I'm going to say Shelby scores for you guys, um, and for us, I am going to go for uh, Mohamed Salah, and I will go for Curtis Jones to get the uh, get the second. But uh, it's going to be a very interesting. very interesting game uh, yeah. for sure. Paul, it has been an absolute pleasure to get you on the channel, get all You're things uh, as well. Where can we find you in the socials? Uh, at the Tune Review on Twitter, um, the Tune Review on Facebook, and I do have an Instagram account where I, I need to start updating that a bit more, which is just the Tune Review as well. Um, so on all three. Yeah, and go go and go and check out uh, Paul's channel. Fantastic guy and a fantastic channel as well. You're doing a fantastic job there. Uh, and I, I do I do tune into the uh, Fortune and the Horseman. I think that's a fantastic oh, series. Okay. Yeah. Um, the Four Horsemen of the Tune is, is one of the shows that we just started basically for. I got um, the other lads in on it um, just to talk about Newcastle United. And it's uh, a couple of comments were made on the early shows by John Sinclair, one of the panellists who um, has now regretted it. And uh, it's just turned into a... Uh, an 18 rated show but it's it's just kind of one of those that um we kind of just do it now to to make people laugh and that's what it's all about at the end of the day especially the situation everybody's in you know we we, we like to um do it on a monday night just to to give everybody a laugh at the start of the week and that's what it's turned into you know um it's very very close to the bone um but you know why not you know life's too short and if you if you don't like that kind of thing you don't watch it simple as that um but the the viewing figures have taken off on it and it's just it's just hilarious. It's 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 great to do as well. 
Yeah, as as I've said, I've, I've tried I've tried to tune into a couple, and uh, I think I think it's fantastic. So yeah, go and follow Paul at the Tune Review. Give him a subscribe as well. I'm um, doing very very well. But uh, a huge huge thank you for you for coming on. And uh, yeah, guys, let us know your starting elevens. Let us know your predictions. Liverpool and Newcastle fans, get in touch uh, as well. And I'm sure myself and Paul will, will reply to any comments you have in the yeah. in the chat as well but thank you very much for watching and we will see what happens tomorrow Liverpool Newcastle as Paul says one of the most iconic fixtures of the Premier League season should be a good one we shall see what happens I'll see you in the next one take care bye bye for now